Are the U.S. technology war and sanctions working on China, or is China closing the gap faster than anticipated? Hi, I'm Lisa, and this is Threshold in China. Today, we are all about competition. We will talk about how China is catching up with the U.S. in areas where the U.S. is ahead in the game. First, let's see how China and the U.S. is doing. Who is leading in what sector? So we are going to do this by looking at a list. It is called the List of Critical and Emerging Technologies. It is released by a well-known Australian think tank, ASPI. According to the list, China takes the lead in 53 categories of cutting-edge technologies in areas like advanced materials and manufacturing, energy and environment, advanced information and communication technologies. China also has a sizable advantage in the domain of defense, space, robotics, transportation, and quantum technology. And China is competing very fiercely with the US in areas such as AI technologies and biotechnology, gene technology, and vaccines. The US still claims dominance over the 11 categories. Remember, this is according to the list, and they are in the field of life sciences, particularly genetic engineering. U.S. also holds edge with natural language processing and advanced integrated circuit design and fabrication. They are vital for technologies like ChatGPT and GPUs to train them. And these are the areas that we are going to focus on today. Let's start with high-performance computing. The supercomputers are no doubt dominated by the US, and no Chinese systems make it to the top 10. But interestingly, it was only a few years ago when Chinese systems such as Sunwei and Tianhe claimed the top spot. So there is a dramatic decline. Many parts of this can be explained with the fact that they haven't submitted any key data of their systems to the organization since 2020. Apparently, due to the sensitivity of the matter because Top 500 is a US organization. In other words, the data Top 500 has regarding Chinese supercomputers are outdated. So, what is the current situation of Chinese supercomputers? On December 6, 2023, the Chinese National Supercomputing Centers in Guangzhou made an announcement about the launch of Tianhe Xingyi, the next-generation supercomputer system. It is equipped with MT3000 processors, designed and manufactured completely in China. The system has over 50,900,000 CPU cores and achieves a remarkable peak performance of 620 petaflops. And this is higher than the Japanese Fugaku system, which is ranked 4th place on the top 500 list. However, Tianhe is actually not the most powerful supercomputer in China. Remember the Sunway I mentioned earlier, the one that used to rank first? Well, its latest addition is Sunway Ocean Lite. It has the domestically developed Sunway 26010 Pro processors. The supercomputer stands out with a configuration of over 100,000 nodes, and it has 41 million cores, and they are distributed across approximately 105 cabinets. It achieves a remarkable peak performance of 1,500 petaflops and that makes it the second most powerful supercomputer globally, beaten by Frontier, which is currently the world's fastest supercomputer, and it is based in the US. But according to South China Morning Post, it also outperformed leading supercomputers, including the Frontier, in computing efficiency. And in an interview with the Post, the Chinese scientist said, the processor is not new, it has been used in China's supercomputing systems for the past two or three years. But the public, especially the Western world, only just came to know it. And there is one more thing. Earlier versions of Sunway and Tianhe used processors from Intel. But after years of relentless research and development, they've become fully homegrown. They are now immune to those US sanctions. Next, let's move on to AI. We see that US has been leading the way as the major powerhouse in this field. ChatGPT from OpenAI has started a revolution and pretty much changed the way we work and study. By comparison, you probably haven't heard of any Chinese AI models. How are they doing? Let's look again at international rankings. One of these is released by Hugging Face, the biggest community of open source AI models. 
As of the Open LLM leaderboard, the Tianwen 72B model from China's Alibaba tops the list, beating the more popular Llama model from Meta. Okay, so that's open source models, but what about closed source ones such as ChatGPT4? So the main difference between open source models and closed source ones is that open source models are freely available for everybody to view, modify and distribute. While closed source models are exclusive and not publicly accessible, Stanford University has got a leaderboard that tracks various language models, both closed source and open source. On the list, we can see the Chinese-made E34B chat ranks just behind GPT-4 and the GPT-4 Turbo, securing the third spot. Given that ChatGPT was unveiled only a year ago, Chinese models are closing in on their US counterparts, with a difference of less than a year. But the government has restricted NVIDIA to sell its GPUs to China and AI models are trained on GPUs, so they're trying to slow down China's AI development. How is it working so far? Let's see what experts in China's AI community have to say about this. In August, Liu Qingfeng, the chairman of Chinese AI giant iFly Tech, commended Huawei for manufacturing a GPU that he claimed was essentially equivalent to NVIDIA's A100. He stated that iFly Tech was collaborating with Huawei to develop hardware. It is believed that the hardware in question was powered by Huawei's GPU called Ascend 910B, which is a previously undisclosed model and its capabilities were, quote, on par with NVIDIA's A100. Like iFly Tech, Baidu also ordered a 1,600 Huawei 9110B chips for the development in 200 servers during August. Analysis and sources noted that while the 910B chips exhibit comparable raw computing power to NVIDIA's offerings, they still lagged in terms of performance. Nevertheless, they are considered to be the most advanced domestic options available within China. Moving on to quantum computing, it is another area where the list put the US ahead of China. The strategic value of quantum computing is comparable to that of AI and potentially far-ranging applications from scientific research to the military. Here again, Chinese scientists have made exciting breakthroughs during 2023. In October, the Chinese Academy of Science introduced a cutting-edge quantum computing prototype, Jiuzhang-3, with 255 photons. The processing speed of Jiuzhang-3 for Gaussian Boson sampling has skyrocketed by an astonishing 1 million times compared to its previous iteration, Jiuzhang-2. To put this tremendous leap into perspective, the highest complex sample handled by Zhuzhang-3 was in a mere 1 millionth of a second, with demand over 20 billion years of computation time from Frontier, the fastest supercomputer that we just talked about. This achievement has not only set a new world record in the field of photonic quantum information technology, but also demonstrated the remarkable capabilities of quantum computing. In the next episode, we will continue this analysis. How is China and the US doing in genetic engineering, vaccine, nuclear medicine, small satellites, and more? Are they neck and neck? How are they doing in comparison with each other? Please feel free to let us know if there is any specific technology that you would like us to talk about, and we'll look into it.